We've toured some of the world's most famous architecture practices, and one thing that's become very clear, and that's that Rhino is king. Pretty much every innovative architecture studio or design-led practice is using it. And in this video, I'm gonna explain why Rhino has become the backbone of innovative architecture. Over the last couple of years, we visited more than 20 architecture firms around the world, from big in Copenhagen to Zaha in London, Yoon Studio, Heatherwick, Foster & Partners, and many, many more. And one of the reasons we do this is to show you what technology firms are actually using in practice. And the truth is everyone is using the same core cool tools. Without exception, all of them rely on Rhino and Grasshopper as their main design tool. It's the common language of advanced architectural design. For me personally, Rhino and Grasshopper has also been at the foundation of my own career. I started my career as a design assistant. I became kind of like the Grasshopper guy on the team. I then moved on to building complex facades of Rhino and Grasshopper. Later spent five years at BIG as a design technology manager overseeing BIM, computational design, AI, all tied together by one constant, which was Rhino. I even used Rhino in the modular housing world whilst also working at Facet Homes. And before you jump into comments, yes, Rhino is just one of many skills architects need. You need to know to design technical skills, but it is a key requirement. If you're gonna join a firm like Big, your chances are almost zero unless you have some kind of Rhino skill set or have some kind of expertise that you're bringing to the office. So who are Rhino's competitors? Well, really, there's only one widely adopted modeling tool in architecture, and that's SketchUp. SketchUp is probably the most used globally 3D modeling platform because it's simple, it's approachable, but at top tier, it's not considered really advanced enough. Once you've built a model in SketchUp, you can quickly hit a ceiling in terms of what you can do with it from collaborating, you know, there's no computational elements, there's a million plugins to fix all the things it can't do. So it does have its limits. Beyond SketchUp, there isn't really a close third, to be honest. Blender is probably the nearest rising alternative, but still a long way off being adopted at scale in architecture. Maya has a cult following, especially with link to Zaha Hadid. But even within those groups, you know, their designers will say Rhino can do it with sub D and it kind of does the same job. And also, I only know one firm in the world that uses Maya, which is Zaha and maybe some firms that have come from Zaha. So Rhino really does stand alone as the most adopted tool by the most innovative architecture firms. Freedom and precision. One of Rhino's biggest strengths is the balance it strikes between freedom and precision. So you can sketch out wild forms, explore new massings, or test different ideas with complete creative freedom, but at the same time, you can model with absolute precision. Geometry, accuracy, enough for even fabrication level stuff. On top of that, Rhino is probably the most interoperable piece of software in the entire AEC space. It can open and export almost any file type, which means you can fit it into any workflow. No matter what consultants are using or contractors are using, you can usually find a format to go between them and Rhino. So this combination of freedom, precision, and interoperability is what makes Rhino so powerful. Beyond modeling. So Rhino isn't just a modeling tool, it's kind of a platform or an ecosystem. With Rhino inside now, you can literally open up Rhino and Grasshopper inside other software like Revit, Unity, or Unreal. And that makes it a bridge between kind of concept design and BIM, or even directly link it into more advanced visualization pipelines. It's also the tool of choice for digital fabrication from CNC, 3D printing, laser cutting, robot arms, they all talk directly with Rhino. And that's why so many firms use it not just to design, but to also fabricate and make things with. Then we have the ecosystem. So Rhino is endlessly extendable. There's plugins for structural design, daylight analysis, thermal modeling, even BIM, from Ladybug to Kangaroo, Visual Arc, the list goes on. So in many ways, Rhino can shift to whatever tool you need it to be. Grasshopper. Now, of course, there's Grasshopper. Now, Grasshopper isn't just a plugin. In my opinion, it's a revolution in how architects design. It's given birth to entire culture of parametric architecture or computational design. With Grasshopper, you're not just drawing manually, you're building systems and processes. You can explore hundreds of variations, automate tasks, you can generate design options that would be impossible to model manually. And some of the most iconic buildings of the 21st century, from Zaha to Big, 
simply wouldn't exist without Grasshopper. And beyond the big names, Grasshopper has created a whole ecosystem of plugins and tools, many of them developed and shared openly and for free within the Rhino community. If you wanna work in a top tier design practice, Grasshopper is also almost becoming a requirement or a very, very big plus. And honestly, Grasshopper alone is what puts Rhino miles ahead of any other modeling platform. Company and licenses. Another reason why architects love Rhino is the company behind it, McNeil. Unlike most software companies, they're not VC backed. They're not driven by shareholders or stock value. They're a small distributed team that listens to their community. And that's quite rare in the AEC space. The price is of course another big factor. A Rhino license can cost under $1,000 and it's perpetual, meaning that you buy it once and you don't need to pay for it every year. You compare that with other companies where you're paying thousands of dollars for a subscription a year, that means architects really value the stability and fairness of McNeil. Education and community. So Rhino and Grasshopper are taught in schools around the world, which feeds this adoption. Yes, the learning curve is steeper than SketchUp, but that has become with almost a stamp of approval that you know Rhino and Grasshopper and therefore are a bit more of, a, of an advanced designer. Being fluent in Rhino and Grasshopper is another component of getting into top tier firms. And just like the best practices use it, the best universities and schools often teach it. Because the ecosystem is also open, there's an amazing culture of sharing. So architects are not just using the tool, they're making their own, they're releasing them as free plugins or scripts that pushes the whole profession forward, which is another huge benefit of McNeil and Rhino. This also brings me to the community. The Rhino community itself is amazing. From the Rhino and Grasshopper forums to the countless tutorials and scripts online, it's one of the most open and supportive software communities out there. And Rhino's influence extends far beyond just architecture. You'll find incredible work being done in product design, fashion, engineering, fabrication, also boat building, which is also one of my favorite uh, sub industries to look at. McNeil also supports this culture with local user group meetings. There's here in the UK, there's a conference called Shape to Fabrication, which is sponsored by them, which showcases the most innovative use of Rhino in actually building projects. Also stay tuned because in March, we'll be running our own event highlighting how firms are using technology in practice today called the ATN Summit. So stay tuned for that. Looking to the future, Rhino's position, I think is only getting stronger to be honest. With Rhino inside, it's kind of secured its place in this Rhino to Revit workflow, which is incredibly valuable. Even with the rise of BIM 2.0, most firms I see, they're not trying to compete with Rhino. They're more trying to integrate with it or kind of play with it in a way. Also with AI, whilst I think there is a little bit of a slow adoption of AI tools in Rhino, of course, a lot of them are using it in some way, whether it's like importing a viewport or a model. So I think AI is only gonna increase the value of Rhino. So that's why I think Rhino is king. It's not just the software, it's the backbone of innovative architecture. It's a tool that balances this freedom, precision, and it powers parametric design, but can also go beyond just modeling and connect to fabrication so you can actually make things. And of course, it's supported by one of the most trusted and beloved companies in the industry, McNeil. If you want to really master Rhino and Grasshopper, I've built two in-depth workshops and masterclasses that take you from absolute beginner to being able to work in practice. I'll be teaching them live as a workshop where you can learn directly from me and you can also access them as a masterclass afterwards. The Rhino workshop will run on the 6th and 7th of September and the Grasshopper the weekend after, which is the 13th and the 14th of September. And both will be available afterwards as pre-record masterclasses so you can learn at your own pace. You can find all the links down below to get your spot on the upcoming workshops or access the masterclass if you're watching this after those dates. As always though, if you like this video, give us a like and a subscribe. It helps to grow the channel. And let me know in the comments what you think. Do you think Rhino is king? Is there any other software I've left off the list that I should have? I always wanna hear from you guys on what your opinion is. Otherwise, thank you again for joining and we'll see you in the next video.